It's Jill from Joe's Country Junction. I'm so glad you're here and you're joining me in my sewing room today. I am been busy. I am squeezing in a quick video here. If you are from the States, you might be celebrating Thanksgiving. As I film this today, it's the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. This might not go up as a video for a few days yet, but I have things to do down in the kitchen. But I know a lot of you are chomping at the bit to try to make more of the pieces for the center of the freeform quilt that I've been making for my grandson, Anders. Um, we've worked through the letters and we've got a lot of the letters made already. And so that's exciting. Um, the next thing that we're, we've been working on is the inside blocks. Last week, I showed you how to make star blocks and I showed you how to make flying geese. If you missed that video, please go back and find that video on YouTube and check out those. If you missed the letters, please go back and check out how to do the letters uh, in a video because I did those, broke those, broke those up into different segments and um, did a section of alphabet over the course of several videos. So today, you might be wondering what we're up to and what the plan is. I've got a little bit of a mess going on here. Um, and other news, you may notice that in my house I have no trim. Well, my son is coming home this weekend and he goes, Hey mom, let's get that trim done up in your sewing room and let's get the trim done in the upstairs bathroom. Um, my sewing room is full of stuff, so I'm going to probably need some time off here um, from even the blog and even everything else to get my sewing room back together after we have to rip it apart to put all the trim up. So it's going to be an interesting time here for me, and um, I'm going to be try to be patient, and I hope my son can be patient with me as well because my sewing room is just a huge mess right now, and... Um, yeah, I need to film this video quickly and then I need to get organizing a few things in my sewing room and then I need to get downstairs and get some pumpkin pie made because him and his kids are arriving here in about three hours. So I don't have a big time span to get a lot of things done, but I didn't want to leave you hanging and not have a video. So here we are. We're going to show you how to make uh, the, uh, the blocks that we're going to make today are we're gonna work on doing a churn dash block. These are all different examples of churn blocks um, or churn dash blocks that I made. And this is just free form. People will ask me, is there a pattern for this? There's no pattern. That's why this is called free form quilting. We're gonna be making the churn dash block. We are going to be making, the, here's two different versions of a little broken dishes block. Here's one here and here's one right in here. I already added some pieces onto those, but that's what a churned or that's what a broken dishes block will look like. So we'll be making those. And the other block we'll be making is a shoe fly block and that's this. So we're gonna start out and we're gonna do probably the easiest one first and that would be this block. And that is the shoe fly block. Um, I have added other pieces onto it, but our focus is just going to be to make this section right in here. And um, later on in videos coming up, I will show you um, how and why we add extra pieces to the outside of the blocks. So, okay. Again, I'm just doing things very free form. So I need some red because I'm going to make a block that's kind of similar to this one. Um, it's going to have red for the focus. And I'm using my scissors that a kind blog reader gave me, which I so appreciate. I cut two squares. You can see them here. And I am going to find some background fabric that might be about the same size. Yep, this is close. I have a white square and a red square, and I'm going to put them together. You can see it's kind of wonky. They're not exactly the same size and they don't have to be. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a scissors and I'm gonna cut corner to corner. So then I have a set together like this. I layered the white background piece with the red. And then I'm gonna do that again with another white piece and another red piece. I'm just layering them on top of each other and I'm cutting them on the diagonal. Okay, so I'm gonna run those through the machine 
sewing from corner to corner. The reason why I um, packaged these three different blocks together in one video is because they all use half square triangles. And so once you learn how to do a half square triangle, it's easy to do the rest of the block. So I'm gonna just trim these apart and I'm gonna iron them and I'll be ironing to the red. I'm just ironing, I've got four pieces here all together and they'll be the corner pieces of the block that we're making. So we're making these corners right here. Okay, they came out, but look at, they're all a little bit wonkily weird. So I'm just, I'm not worrying exactly about size. I'm just trimming off the corners a little bit to make them a little bit more user friendly. They don't have to be perfect. They don't even have to be all the exact same size because we'll kind of um, rectify that as we go. So I'm gonna lay these out with the corners, the directions that they need to be. I'm gonna cut an extra square here. I think I need to iron that. A red square is gonna go in the center. And then I need some white squares to go around the outside. And um, yeah, I think these will, I think I have four here. Uh, I can lay these out. It doesn't matter if they're too big, we'll just figure that out later. So you can see my pieces are kind of laid out and the block will be laid out like this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew this into a row, sew this into a row, and then sew that into a row, and then we're gonna sew the rows together. So I'm gonna grab two and run them through the machine. Um, this would just be assembled just like you would if you're making a nine patch block. It's not hard sewing. I think it's harder to get used to the concept of not worrying about cutting things perfectly. Um, how many times have all of us been somewhere and the person or instructor that talked to us said, you have to make sure that you have a perfect quarter and seam allowance and um, you have to make sure that your cutting is perfect because if your cutting isn't perfect, your block isn't gonna turn out right. Well, it's kind of fun and freeing to do this where it's okay if your block doesn't turn out right. Okay, I got one more piece to sew on here. Then I'll have the rows together. This is all intended for it to look wonky and be wonky. So don't worry if it doesn't look perfect because in reality we don't want it to look it's not supposed to look perfect so now I have my three rows together I'll show you those um, at this point I don't even iron because it's wonky it's okay this is gonna this needs to lay down that needs to lay down but you can see the block is starting to come together and I'm gonna sew these rows together. And I just roughly try to, maybe kind of in general, match the um, seams, but not, not really. I don't try to match the seams. However they land, they land and it's perfectly okay. The whole quilt is gonna be wonky and when it's all wonky to, at the same time, then it looks like it's supposed to be made that way and then you that's why you don't have to worry so much about the, oh, I was wondering why this looked goofy. Look at this. I bet you guys were all yelling at me through the camera going, Joe, you have that the wrong direction. Well, thankfully I've got a trusty little seam ripper here and we'll rip that off quick. I was too busy talking and not paying enough attention to what I was doing. So just a few little, threads and that's ripped apart. We'll just put that down. 
So that, and we can get back to sewing this piece onto our block. And I've got pretty uneven edges along here, so I'm just gonna take my scissors and trim that off. Got that in place. I don't know if you were with me the other night and watched, uh, we did a YouTube live and we did a Facebook live together. And um, we had a Q and A section where a lot of people asked me um, questions that they were curious about. And I answered the questions and um, it was kind of fun. I had never done anything like that before. My daughter's been uh, pressing me and saying, mom, you need to do a live, you need to do a live. And I'm like, what's a live, you know? So I had no idea really what I was supposed to do, but apparently I've got some good comments from all of you. And so apparently it was an okay live. So yeah. So here's our little patched up star. And that is not a star, it's actually called a shoe fly block. And all it consists of is the four nine or the four uh, half square triangle blocks, one solid block, and then four background blocks. And that's the quick little block that makes up a shoe fly block. And uh, I have several of them typically in the quilts when I make these. Uh, if you, if I was guessing, I might make like five of these. That's a, probably a good number. Um, when it comes time for us to assemble the quilt, if you have five of them, you'll probably be in pretty good shape. So we have the shoe fly block done, yahoo! And I wanna note too that in the quilts, you can change how you do your coloring. If you wanna have mostly things with white background, you can, or if you wanna use different um, colored backgrounds, like in this case, I used a blue shirt was in the backgrounds of what I was working on. So however you like it is however you can do it. Okay, so the next block we're gonna fo focus on is a broken dishes block. And um, both of these, this one and this one are broken dishes blocks. And so we'll work on those next. Again, we're gonna need some uh, half square triangles. So I have my strip of fabric out and I have a square and we're gonna do them the same way we did them before. We're gonna sandwich two squares together like this and we're just gonna cut on the diagonal. And I'm gonna see if I got another piece of that fabric I do. And I'm gonna cut so I have two squares sandwiched and then I'm gonna cut on the diagonal. Then I'm gonna put those through the machine, sewing on that diagonal. And we need four of those for a broken dishes block. I'm going to iron to the red. It doesn't really matter which direction you iron to, but most people are um, familiar with ironing to the dark side. So that's what I'm working on here is ironing to the dark side. A broken dishes blocks is really just made up of four half square triangles. And we're going to have those ready here in just a second. Oops, I got some thread in that one. Okay, so broken dishes blocks are quite simple. Um, they just take your the half square triangles that you made and then you position them so two have their darker color in and two have the lighter color going into the center. And so we just sew them together just like that and that's how quick a broken dishes block is. So isn't it feeling good to be able to hammer out a few blocks real quick like that? One thing I love about this freeform piecing is, is I didn't have to go to um, a cutting table. I didn't have to get out a rotary cutter. I didn't have to get out a rotary mat. I just can sit at my machine and create. It's kind of like a artist at an easel. You don't need so many extra tools. 
Okay. So I have these sewn together. I'm going to clip this off because that's kind of big. And you can do that whenever you want. If you just look at something and go, oh, I don't like how that looks, you can just cut it right off. It's perfectly fine. Many of the times when I'm doing this, I use shirt pieces that are otherwise small anyway. Like I might use the yoke or I might use the front right here, the facing or whatever, or I might use pieces of the pocket or um, I might use a collar. And so it's a great way to use up fabrics that you might not otherwise use to make a quilt like this. Okay, so here's our little churn dash block. Here it's on there and you know, I hope you can see that pretty good. Um, in these, you can tell that um, I added some pieces and here I added some pieces to this one as well. Um, how about we just add some pieces onto this and I'll show you what that can look like. And if you want to, you could uh, do that for some of your blocks and you just end up with a larger block, which is kind of fun. So I'm going to take, I'm going to make two bigger squares. So here's one square I have that's bigger. Oh, wait, here I have this piece. I think this will work. This one happens to be green. I'm just cutting two squares. So you can see I have two squares here. I have them sandwiched together. So I know that they're in general close to the same size. And then I'm going to cut from corner to corner. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use like a square and a square method. So I'm going to end up getting this put on point. And I'm going to move that off there. Add these pieces to the side. So then the our little shoe fly block will be set in there like this. And so I'm just going to keep, I'm going to sew these to the side. So I'm going to start out with sewing, um, line it up like this. You can see that big triangles on top and the other pieces on the bottom. I'm just gonna sew across there. If you're making some turn dash blocks for your quilt, you're probably gonna want to leave some small and some big because you're gonna need some big pieces to lay out and then you're gonna need to make some spacers. And so if this block was small, it would be considered a spacer, but if it's big like this, it'd be considered a big block. Okay, so what you can see is we have this, I'm gonna put it on here. Right now it looks like this. I have one triangle on this side and one triangle sewn on this side. I'm gonna come with my scissors, I'm gonna trim off here and I'm gonna trim off down here. And then I'll add the other corners on each side of the block. So it looks like this now, I'll put a corner over here and I'll put a corner over here. corner on and then I'll iron and show you what it looks like all that kind of gummed up in my machine a little bit we'll just trim that off okay I'll iron and then we'll get that shown to you It turned out pretty wonky. You can see I don't have a square block here. It's quite wonky. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the scissors and I'm gonna cut it so that it's pretty close to square-ish maybe. It's just not quite so big and not quite so wonky is my goal. Okay. 
Oops, I'm having trouble. Okay, so this is what I have now. And it just looks like that. With this freeform piecing, the things I love about it is now you can just go, oh, I have blue in the center, I have green out here. I think I'm gonna come back with blue and put a blue border around it. That's kind of what this one ended up with is getting a, and how it got a blue border on it. And I think I went and took and put took some red and put some red in the corners here. You can do whatever you want, whatever just like floats your boat at the time. So that was how we do the shoe fly block. And we're doing pretty good getting these blocks all done. So we have the shoe fly done and we have the uh, broken dishes done. Now our next block for us to do is going to be a turn dash block. And these are all examples of turn dash blocks. This one has a white background. This was blue with a yellow background. This is blue with a um, colored background, even some orange in it. So I'm kind of leaning towards having more of this style of block in my quilt because I, I kind of like the look of that of the one behind me. And these were leftovers, I think, of when I made Carver's quilt and this one I just made recently so that I'd have a model to show you. So again, we're going to start out making those half square triangles. So I got to find some fabric that we can use. We're going to need four half square triangles. I'm finding some fabric. So we need two white squares, two red squares that are approximately the same size. So that's what we're working on now. And then I sandwich a background one with a red one. And then I cut from diagonal to diagonal. And this is the same thing that we've been doing for all of the other blocks. So I'm gonna move this, oh, that one's kind of wonky. I'm gonna move it a little bit. Whoops, what's with my machine? It didn't sound happy. Oh no. Uh-oh. This is not what we want to happen when we're filming a video, is it? We don't want our machine to get moody. Okay, I'm back. Um, if you were following along, I had a little glitch with my machine. I have it all fixed and everything's going. I really don't know what was wrong with it. Um, I just played around with it a little bit and it's working just fine now. So we were to the point that we had put together a uh, background square and a red square and we had cut on the diagonal and we did that so we'll have four half square triangles to sew. So here we go sewing them. Now I'm on a thread. <laughs> oh, I'm just having the luck today. Of course, you know, this is the day that I'm going to try to hurry up and run up here quick and film a video. And so nothing's being quick for me, but ah, that's okay. That's kind of sometimes how the cookie crumbles. So we'll just put in some new bobbin thread here and well, nope, it's just my thread broke. It wasn't, it wasn't that I was out. Okay, get this in place. Get my thread pulled to the top. And then we should be ready to be back in business again. Hopefully, I don't have more of a problem than I thought and I end up with thread breakage issues, but we'll see. You just never quite know. Um, it seems like whenever I'm working with a sewing machine, um, I'll think I have it fixed and then something happens and I don't. So hopefully, fingers crossed, this truly is fixed. So I'm going to iron those four half square triangles that I did. Oh, that one, first one was a little bit wonky. I'll run this through so I can get the other triangles. 
I haven't sat down and kind of did some power sewing on this to really try hard to get the middle section done. Um, after my son gets done putting the trim up in this room, that's going to be my focus is to really push and get this quilt um, towards a finish. I think I might have um, one more video to show you um, some different blocks that I made for the center. And um, then I might just um, start to show you how to trim the outer blocks. And then I might start showing you how to put the inside of the quilt together. So we're making a turn dash block. This one's pretty wonky. I know I can't use it that way. So I'm going to just square it up just a little bit. Okay. So this one's wonky too. Okay. Um, you can see that some of our blocks are bigger and some are smaller. It's totally okay. So what? now that we have those, we need to do the rest of the block. So I have a center. This is going to go in the center. And then I'm going to need the rail section. So I'm going to need, it, for us, it's going to be um, red with a background. And to do that, I uh, previously already cut some strips. Just some really narrow strips. I have one background strip and one red strip. And I'm going to sew those together. I actually have two sections of that and I'm going to sew them both. I don't know if I need them both. We'll see. run this through and then we'll iron those and then I'll show you how to do the next part. Okay. Okay, I have that one ironed. And what I do is I take this um, center section that I have and then I cut this into the same um, long the same lengths. I was able to do it with just one. I'll save that one for another block. Okay, so I have this set up like this, and I'm going to put these in here with the red to the center. There's another style of block or another block you could do. I think it's called a Grecian block that you can turn your pieces this way. So if you decide you wanna make it that way, you can make it that way. Just make sure you do all of them the same. So that would be uh, some variety and give you a different block to do. So now we're gonna just throw, sew this together like you would a nine patch. So these are gonna go in a row, these are gonna go in a row, and those are gonna go in a row. So I'll start doing that. And if your triangle is bigger than your uh, side section, don't worry about it. Um, just line them up to the red. So here you can see that this section is a little bit taller, so we're going to line it up down here and not up here. So line up to the red. Okay, my dog, my foster dog is fussing downstairs, so... I don't know if he's just fussing or if there's something wrong. So I'm going to quick try to get this together and then um, close out the video. Okay, I keep sewing those into the strips that we need them to be in. My foster dog hasn't figured out how to come upstairs yet. So it could be that he's just sad because he can't be up here. And that could be perfectly why. Okay, so you can see that this is sticking out wonky out here. I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm going to lob that off. And that's perfectly fine. I'm going to lob it off up here too. And then I'm going to sew that to the center section that I have sewn. So we're going to put those together and sew them. When I line them up to sew, I always make sure that I, 
when I'm lining it up, I line up with the middle in mind. If there's something that's going to be too big, I try to make sure my, my piece is in the middle. So you can see here, I aim towards the middle to try and line things up from the middle and I've got things hanging off the edge here. We're just going to take a scissors and whack that off later. I'm going to put the other section of this together. Again, kind of keeping things in the middle more lined up than the outside edges lined up. This is going to be a pretty wonky turn to act, but that's okay. Okay, you can see how wonky it looks. It really, it's sticking out the side here and sticking out the side over here. So I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm going to square that up. And again, these are not blocks that you need to fret over if they don't look just perfectly fabulous like you're used to because they're not supposed to look perfectly fabulous. That's what freeform quilting is all about, is just making a block. And the more wonky they are, the more they fit in with the other wonky blocks that you have. So here's the block all trimmed and ready to go. Um, you can see this corner down here is smaller than this corner up here, and that's totally fine. That's part of the wonkiness um, and the charm of the quilt. So today we went over the turn dash block, and we went over the broken dishes block, and we did the, where can I find it? Shoe fly block. So that was four more blocks to add to the blocks that you're making for the center. And so there they are, turn dash, broken dishes, and shoe fly. So you can see that there'll be fun additions to the center of the quilt when we get to it. Um, I could, you could easily make five of each of these blocks um, if you're just gonna make a baby quilt and uh, we'll find a spot for them in the quilt somewhere. So I hope you enjoyed your time here with me today. I sure appreciate having you here in my sewing room. Um, if you get a chance, um, I really appreciate if you like the video or if you leave a comment because I can't get any better at doing these if you don't leave me a comment. And I really do value your feedback. Um, even if you tell me things like the lighting was terrible or I couldn't hear you very well or your machine is too loud, any constructive criticism that you give me, I really appreciate because I do take that to heart and I do try to fix things that are problem areas. Um, again, thanks for joining me. I'm off to check on my foster dog and then it's time to make some pies. The company's coming. So uh, I just got a call from Buck when I was uh, fiddling with my broken sewing machine and he said he's on his way. So that means I got about an hour and 45 minutes. So uh, I got pie to get in the oven. So I better go. Have a happy Thanksgiving wherever you are and a happy holidays. So catch you later. Bye.